Hi, my name is Charlie Barrett. I grew up in Oklahoma and I work as a New Mexico field advocate for Earthworks based out of Las Cruces, New Mexico. New Mexico has actually passed a lot of really great rules and regulations regarding um, clean air and just um, environmental mitigation efforts. Um, in the state of New Mexico, unfortunately, we don't have uh, the means to enforce a lot of those regulations. So what we do at Earthworks is we work with frontline community members who are affected by oil and gas industry to identify sites that are leaking emissions so that we can report those to the New Mexico Environmental Department. I cover the entire state and um, we have sites up in Gallup, New Mexico, sites um, near Santa Fe, but the primary area of concern in New Mexico is the New Mexico Permian Basin. Um, that is the um, heart of oil and gas production globally. And so a lot of people don't realize that the Permian Basin also exists in New Mexico. It's primarily in Texas, but we have three counties in Eastern New Mexico. Because of the saturation of oil field, I can visit up to 50 or 60 sites in a day. And it's common for me to produce between 17 and 25 complaints every month. Actually, uh, when, I, when I was in high school, I was more interested in the arts and I actually pursued a BFA um, or a Bachelor of Fine Arts when I was in college at New Mexico State University. Um, I think that my appreciation for art, especially photography and you know, capturing landscapes, natural spaces, wildlife, is what led me to a, a, a career in conservation. So I was actually a little bit older when I decided to um, study wildlife management, to study ecology, forestry. Um, so it's kind of weird, like art, art led me here, but um, I, you know, was very concerned about, you know, our planet, concerned about, you know, wildlife and our, our natural resources that also sustain humans. My interest in conservation came from just simply taking an elective class. I chose to take a wildlife management um, course, just a basic wildlife management 101 um, through the College of Ag Agriculture and found that, that that was the place for me. I'd always appreciated the natural world and, you know, really enjoyed being outdoors. Um, you know, in pristine wilderness areas. And I was really fortunate. I went to a little university called Sol Ross State University in the Big Bend region and was very lucky to be in one of the last pristine intact ecosystems in the lower 48. And so I think that combination of being in such a beautiful place and studying wildlife management is what led to my passion in conservation, um, but also like mitigating environmental concerns. I actually started out working for Parks and Wildlife um, as an intern. So that's how I got my start um, working as a biologist. I worked for them uh, doing an array of different things, working on habitat restoration projects in involving like Montezuma quail, bighorn sheep, uh, mule deer. And then after I completed uh, two internships with Parks and Wildlife, um, I ended up getting a job with Texas A&M University Forest Service and um, went through the certification process to become an ecologist and to become a forester. And I studied conifer forests and um, habitat restoration of different uh, tree species in far west Texas and, and southeastern New Mexico. After that, um, working in the Permian Basin, studying wildlife and studying plants, um, I became very concerned by the sheer amount of oil and gas production and how that kind of interrupted the natural balance. Um, through habitat fragmentation, which would, you know, kind of, and ha what habitat fragmentation means is basically breaking up a natural ecosystem that can have a dramatic effect on the plants and wildlife in that region. And so that's very damaging. And by seeing that, I thought, well, maybe there's a different way to do this. While biologists are critically important, I felt that I may be able to make a bigger impact um, working in the nonprofit sector for another environmental organization that focuses on the oil and gas industry, which is um, unfortunately one of the most destructive industries. My interest in science didn't develop until later in my high school career. Um, I had a great biology professor who was also a herpetologist, and that really influenced my decision to move towards the environmental science, uh, sciences, to become a wildlife biologist, to become an environmentalist. Um, so she had a huge impact on my, on my life. Whoever's watching this, if you are interested in the environmental sciences, and um, one thing that you know concerned me early on is like this can be a somewhat you know depressing field to work in at, at times, and it can be hard to find hope. 
Um, but it's there. We have so many successful stories of habitat restoration, species restoration. Um, you know, an idol that I've always looked up to is Jane Goodall. And it's a place that I always look to, to or, you know, her literature um, as a, or her books are, you know, are, I've always been a resource for me to find hope because almost every book she's ever written has the word hope in it. Um, and in order to stay motivated and to, um, you know, do what we need to do in order to solve the climate crisis, I always look to those inspiring figures so that I can stay motivated and continue to do this work. It is good work. It is very challenging, but it's not all, you know, doom and gloom. There are a lot of really great things happening in the world. 